Hi, my name is Sharon Hughes and I'm the Global Technical Marketing Manager for Redentasize for BASF. And today I'd like to present to you Cilantro, the new and innovative Redentasize bait from BASF. So I'd like to go through the why, why did we developed this Redentasize bait, the what, what exactly is Cilantro and the how and where to use it. So thank you and please join me in my presentation. So as introduced, welcome to the Cilantro Technical tra Training Guide. So throughout this presentation, I've divided it, as I said, into three sections. Why Cilantro? Why did we develop Cilantro? What was the need that we thought? And these are the, the subjects that were covered under that. So resistance, toxicological profile, environmental and mode of action. And then following on from that, what cilantro is, what, what the actual characteristics and the physical and chemical properties. And then finally, the how and where to use cilantro. But as a way of an introduction, I just wanted to give you a brief history. So as an industry, we knew we needed a non-anticoagulant redenticide bait, one that was effective for rats and mice in all situations. And as BASF, we looked at over 1,200 compounds over a 10-year period. And none of these compounds ticked all the boxes. So having had experience with working with cholecalciferol during my years at Sorex and BASF, we re-looked at cholecalciferol as the potential active ingredient. And historically, there were problems with palatability, particularly in rats. And so what we did is we spent three years reformulating a bait that contained cholecalciferol, but was actually extremely palatable and efficacious. And that, that final bait is what we have now, cilantro. So if I take now a look at resistance management. So if we look at the map, and this is a, taken from the Resenticide Resistant Action Committee, RAC. and if you go onto their website, you can click any country, rats and mice, and look at the, the recording of um, resistance. And we can see here we have rats on the left and mice on the right. And as we, as we move from yellow into red, it means the, the more resistance. And we can see that there's a widespread of resistance. But as we know, just because something isn't on the map, it doesn't mean that there isn't actually resistance there, it just means it's not been tested. So we know we have a problem in the UK with anticoagulant resistance. So for our cilantro, we tested it against anticoagulant resistant rats. So if we look at this table, we start off with Wistars and they're anticoagulant susceptible. And then we tested Welch. Now these are resistant to all first generation, so warfarin, Cumatetrol, chlorofacinone. We tested what we call Hampshire. They're resistant to all the first generations and tolerant to diphenicum and bromodilone. And then we have the most resistant ones that we know of, the Berkshires, which are resistant to all the first generations and then also resistant to diphenicum and bromodilone. So currently there are only flacumafens or storm products that work Brodifacum and Diphethylone, they're the products that work against the Berkshires. And just to, so you can see, for each one of these we have the, the mutation that corresponds with their resistance status. And for these, we each, each strain, we test it against rats, males and females. And then we have the next column, we can see the palatability ratio. I'll come into the palatability ratio a bit more in a few slides, but basically it's how many more, how much more palatable cilantro was compared with the control diet that we offered. And for these studies, it was the laboratory diet. So just a choice feeding. And if we look at the last column, we can see the percentage mortality and by what time that they were all, they were all dead. And we can see that we have, apart from in one case, 100% mortality and one 90%, and they were all dead by day three or day four. So we can see here now clear evidence that it's, cilantro is both palatable and efficacious against both anticoagulant susceptible and anticoagulant resistant rats. So how can we use cilantro as a resistance management tool? So not only is it effective against resistant, anticoagulant resistant rats and mice, 
but resistance to cholecalciferol and hence to cilantro is highly unlikely to develop. And this is because it's an essential pro-hormone for mammals. It regulates the calcium in our blood and for, an, for a rat to be resistant to the cholecalciferol, it would have to be able to tolerate physiological levels of calcium in the blood that would actually be fatal. So while we can, can't say resistance to cholecalciferol will never happen, it's highly unlikely. So now we have a two-pronged attack. It kills all resistant rats and mice, and resistance is highly unlikely to develop. So now if we look at the toxicological profile. So this is the, the, tox, the toxicity of cilantro in the three key species. So we have brown rat, black rat and house mice. And if we say for the 250 gram brown rat, it's going to eat about 25 grams a day. So that's that pie that we see underneath the brown rat. And with the LD50 of cilantro at 13.7 grams for the, our 250 gram rat, that's about 55% of its daily food take. And we look the same for black rat, so our 150 gram black rat is going to eat approximately 15 grams. So that's with the LD50 of about 8.6 grams, that's approximately 57% of its daily food take. And then the last we look at the house mice, if we say our, a 25 gram house mouse is going to eat about five grams a day with an LD50 of 1.4 grams, so that's about 28% of its daily food intake. So we can see across the three species that it is possible for cilantro to be eaten a lethal dose in one day. And the key to having that lethal dose eaten in a day is to make the bait highly palatable, which we'll come on to in a few slides. As part of the toxicity, I wanted to show you a slide on the secondary toxicity of cholecalciferol. So we have the species on the left-hand side, so that's dogs, cats and ferrets, and they're the secondary toxicity. They're the ones that were fed, the rats or the mice or the possums, or the rats or the possums or the that were in the next column. So the first line, a rat is treated with cholecalciferol and then fed to a dog. The next line, possums are fed with cholecalciferol and then the dead possums fed to dogs. The next line, possums again, so you can tell which kind of country these studies are undertaken in. The possums are fed cholecalciferol and then the dead possums fed to cats. And then finally, rats fed cholecalciferol and the dead rats fed to ferrets. And if we look at the results then, we can see that no clinical signs were observed. So there was no signs of toxicity seen in the, in the, the secondary species, so the dogs, the cats, the ferret. The only time that it was, was when the dogs were fed five carcasses of the possums that had been fed cholecalciferol. So that's quite a lot. And for those dogs, they had moderate sublethal signs of the poisoning, of toxicity, but they all recovered. So that's the secondary toxicity profile for cholecalciferol and then obviously for cilantro. So now let's look at the environmental profile. So cilantro balances performance, and by that I mean how effective it is at killing the rats and mice against the environmental impact. So what do we mean by the environmental impact? So it's not bioaccumulative. It's not persistent in the environment. And in birds, it's 50 times less sensitive than it is in rats and mice. And that's from studies that were undertaken on quails and mallards. So that's our environmental impact summary. And the performance we'll come on to in a few slides to show you how it actually performs against rats and mice. And lastly, under this why, remember I said we wanted a non-anticoagulant, something with a completely different mode of action. So how does cholecalciferol work? So cholecalciferol, it's naturally occurring in all animals. And it's under very tight metabolic control that I mentioned earlier. 
and we synthesize it by the action of sunlight on our skin and we need it for healthy teeth and bones and what we have is we need it for healthy teeth and bones but too much cholecalciferol is then toxic and it causes hypercalcemia so hyper is just too much and calcemia is calcium in the blood and that's its mode of action so what happens is so this is just now an infographic to summarize this we have too much it works by having too much calcium in the blood that causes a stop feeding effect so this calcium in the blood it's circulating in the blood and it's then deposited in soft tissues so the heart the kidney the liver the lung and one of these soft tissues is the stomach and that causes a stop feeding effect 24 hours after they've eaten the lethal dose and then we have like i mentioned death from hypercalcemia and death is two to five days after the rat or the mouse has eaten the lethal dose so stop feeding after 24 hours and then death after two to five days as part of the mode of action, cholecalciferol is now, it's recognised as crew, in crew as being coming under the, the rodenticide stewardship regime. And this will now be included in the, the campaign, in the, the leaflet, the Think Wildlife. But for now, we just have a statement from crew saying that um, cholecalciferol bait, base baits will fall under this, this um, banner for the think wildlife so now we've, we've covered everything about why we wanted something that had different um, resistance was a resistance buster different toxicological and environmental profile and completely different mode of action so the next thing is what is cilantro its product overview and characteristics so it's a ready-to-use rodent bait we have high performance, obviously, because that's what we need. The active substance, as I've said, is cholecalciferol, and the key to this, it's not an anticoagulant. It contains 750 parts per million, or 0.075% of the cholecalciferol. And if you look at the, the photograph at the bottom of this slide, you can see it's a 20 gram soft block, so what used to be called pastas, so it's a soft block in its pale green and we can see there that it has a, a preformed hole and the hole is in the bait not in the wrapper so it's easier now to thread onto a wire or a rod for securability and then obviously it has the human taste deterrent and warning dye the ingredients in cilantro are almost 99 percent human food grade ingredients so things that we'd use in, in food that we eat it's all bound together with vegetable oil. So many soft blocks are bound together with pork fat. But ours is a vegetable oil. Uh, in some countries, some, some regions, this is a really important point. As well as all these ingredients that the rats, mice recognize as food, we've also added an extra flavor, an extra odor. And this is at a level for rats and mice to smell, not for, for us, for pest controllers, for end users to smell. And the whole bait, each block is then wrapped in a perforated film. So it has little holes all in it to allow all these natural odors from the ingredients, from the added odor. So allow all them to actually come out and for the rats and the mice to be able to detect them. So to make it an appealing food source that they actually want them to go on and eat. We have a three year shelf life and we have stability data extremely high and extremely low and in different conditions because this is a global product. So we need it to work everywhere from the hottest to the coldest of climates. So how, how have we tested Solange? How have we got to where we are now with its characteristics? So do you remember in one of the earlier slides when we were talking about resistance, I said about we tested palatability and this is how we did it. So we take cilantro and we offer it in a choice against a control. Now the control could be the laboratory diet that the rats and mice are fed on all their lives or it could be 
a competitor food, as we can see, a competitor debate, sorry, as we can see in the bottom slide. Or it could be a competitor food, such as pisglet food, maize silage, burger. We've tested cilantro against all of these, and each rat has a choice, so they don't have to eat the cilantro. And then we, we come up with a factor. So we say the amount of cilantro eaten, or the amount of control diet, whichever one that was, that gives us a palatability ratio. And one simply means they ate 50-50 of each equal amounts. Twice, two indicates they ate twice as much cilantro. Most anticoagulant baits have a ratio of between 0.5 and 1.5, with the, the soft blocks, the pastas, being more at the 1.5 end. So what we did is we looked at other cholecalciferol baits that, have been, that are on the market at the moment globally, because there are none in Europe, but we looked at them globally. And remember, palatability ratio of one just means they liked cilantro as much as anything else, 50-50. But we looked at the competitors that are available. So the one mark is there in orange. And we tested each of the competitors against males in the darker green and females in the lighter. So first of all, it was a wax block. And we can see that for both sexes, the palatability ratio was below one. The next competitor was a cholecalciferol pellet. And again, for both males and females, the palatability ratio was below one. So the next set of studies was cilantro against males and females. And we can see here that for males, it was over four, and for females, over six. So they liked the cilantro four times more or six times more than the diet that they've been fed on all their lives that was balanced and nutritious. So we can see now we've really raised the bar of palatability for a cholecalciferol bait. This data of, of the six studies shown is all for day one. And remember when we talked about mode of action, cholecalciferol causes a stop feeding after 24 hours. So we need a highly palatable bait because that has to get the lethal dosing within the 24 hours. So now you can see about this partnership between palatability and mode of action. We need them, we need that relationship, highly palatable and fast mode of action to get quick control. And they must work together. It's no point having um, fast action if we haven't got the high palatability because we won't get that lethal dose eaten in time. So this is just a video clip to show one of the studies that we did. And these rats had a choice. I mean, we had to take the lid off the, the bait box to see that they had a choice between cilantro and a competitor soft block. And we can see here, and this is what happened, they just ate the cilantro. And it shows here as well how they eat the cilantro. So they take it from inside the wrapper so when you go back after the treatment, it's just the empty wrapper left on the rod or the wire. Okay. So as well as testing cilantro against competitor baits, where they were um, each one was tested against the control diet, the laboratory diet, we tested them in a side to side. So actually, cilantro against the competitor bait. And this is the results of three studies here. First of all, cilantro was tested against bromodialone bait. Then the next study, it was tested against a diphenylone. And the next study, it was tested against a cumatetralyl. These were against male brown rats. And we can see, if we look at the first study, and it shows how much of each was eaten on, again on this day one, because we know after the first day, the stop feeding effect kicks in. So to begin with, the bromodialone, they ate almost four times more cilantro. We look now at the diphenylone, and they ate seven, eight times more cilantro. And then the last one, the cumatetralyl, they ate eight to ten times more cilantro. So we can see in those three studies, in side-by-side -side comparisons, we can see that cilantro was highly competitive and highly palatable. 
But when the end user goes to the field in a true infestation, it's not, um, it's not competitor bait that is the competitor food for cilantro. It's what the rats and mice are feeding on. So we went to a farm and we took a sample of May silage and we went to another farm and took piglet feed. And we brought them back to the laboratory and we tested each of them. So this is the results of two studies against cilantro. And against May silage, and again, this is how much was eaten on day one, we can see that over 13 times more cilantro was eaten than the May silage. And for the piglet feed, over four times more cilantro was eaten than the piglet feed. So now we have confidence that when we take this cilantro to an infestation in a rural environment, we should get good results because it's competitive against the alternative food source that's there. So now what about urban environments? So we took cilantro and we tested it against a beef burger. But just the, the meat bit, just the pate, as nice as this picture looks, we took away all the, the healthy vegetables and lettuce and tomato and just tested it against the pate. Because that's high in protein, high in fat and it's palatable. And we look again on the graph and we can see the amount of cilantro and beef burger that was eaten again on our day one. And we can see it was slightly more cilantro. That isn't significant, but for me, if we'd have had equal amounts of burger, I'd have been really happy because that's a really uh, attractive and palatable alternative food source. So now we can see that cilantro also can compete in urban environments with palatable food sources there. We've talked about this faster mode of action. Cilantro causes to stop feed after 24 hours and then death two to, after two to five days. So this is, just to show you this, this is studies taken again on brown rats. We had 50 rats that were fed cilantro, that's the green line, and 50 rats that were fed a second generation anticoagulant in a choice feed. And we recorded the time to death. And we can see that for cilantro, the rats died on either day two or day three. For the anticoagulant, it's a typical anticoagulant curve. We have them starting at day four. The last one was at day nine, with most of them around day five and six. So both baits affected 100% mortality. But the cilantro, the average time to death was 2.8 days, and for the anticoagulant, 5.7. So we've concertinaed, if you like, the time to control. Like I say, both affected 100% mortality, but the cilantro by day three, the anticoagulant by day nine. So concertinaed in the actual time it takes to control. So now, like I say, with the palatability, with the time to death, we can see really now how this will all work when we, when we take it to a field trial and look at infestations. We've mentioned a lot about rats, but I just want to show we have equal data for mice. So this is, these were the results of three pen trial studies. So by a pen trial, we mean kind of a two meter by two meter arena where we just breed the mice. So it's a, a breeding colony. So we have mixed ages, we have the both sexes, um, they have the food that they're fed on, they have the harbridges, and it's like a mini infestation. And the regulators call it a simulated use, and that's what we have. And this is the step we take before we move into the field, because we can see what's going on. We have, we have better visual awareness of what's happening. So this is the results of three studies, such simulated use studies. The first two against anticoagulant susceptible mice, the last study against bromodilone resistant mice. We can see we have mixed numbers because it was a breeding colony. And now we look at the palatability ratios and these are really high. So that means 53 times more cilantro was eaten than the alternative food that we, we kept in place. What we'd fed the colony Throughout the, when we got them to this level, we, we re, that remained in place. 16 times more palatable, almost 25 times more palatable. And then we look at mortality. And again, we've got our 100% by day four or day five. 
even against the anticoagulant resistance, the bromodilone resistant mice. So against rats and mice, sorry, against rats, and now we can see against mice, it's efficacious against both anticoagulant susceptible and resistant mice. So what we see now is that we can reduce the time that it takes to control an infestation. So with Salondra, it's possible to get control in seven days. I've got a slide I'll show you in a bit. Not every, obviously not every infestation because there's no, two, as we know, there's no two infestations alike, but it is possible. And that's compared to anticoagulants where it's 14 to 28 days with the average being 21. So this is the results of a, a brown rat urban trial. And I just wanted to put up just one example. So we have many, many of these, as you can imagine, um, from years of, of working and, and in different countries. But I just wanted to show you one. So this was done in the UK. It was, um, the alternative food was discarded fast food in, from rubbish bins in the canteen. So it was a, a timber yard that was in the a town center and also from rubbish that was in nearby bins near to this actual site. And what we've done is we measure before we go in with cilantro. We want to assess the population before and after the treatment because we need to prove to ourselves or the regulators or end users, we need to show that it works. So we measure the amount of wheat. In this case, we. For the pre-sensors, we just use whole wheat. It's got nothing on it, it's just plain whole wheat. And we measure how much is taken every day for four days. The average was about 660 grams. And we use as a measurement of how many rats are there, approximately 10 grams per rat. Now we know our rats eat more than that, but we're saying the rest of their daily food will be on what was ever in the canteen rubbish bin or the rubbish bin that's out on the street. So we've got about 66 rats here. Then we have a lag period of seven to 10 days. And this is so we know for sure that we've not conditioned the rats to feeding. So it's a complete break from anything in the, on this infestation. And then we go back in with cilantro and we can see the results in the green. And we can see the high take on day one, it's reduced by half the next day. Then we go to day three, we had no take day four, five, six, and then a little take on day seven. Now we record take every day because we want to show what's going on. Then after that, we have another lag period, which is about three or four days. And then we go in with wheat again, and we can see the post sensor, so the post treatment analysis, we have no wheat take. But while we're doing that, we want a different way of looking at what's going on. Because what if, post-census, the rats are actually there, but for some reason not feeding? So the second way is measuring tracking score. And for this one, there was probably about 30 patches down, sand patches, and we just measure the percentage of each sand patch that had footprints, and that gives us a score. And we add the 30 scores together, and that gives us a value that we plot here. So while we're doing all the, the pre-census measurement of the wheat, we're also doing tracking score. And we can see the pre-census tracking score, and then we can see with cilantro what happens when we're treating cilantro. And we can see between day one and day two, a 50% a reduction in activity. Between day two and day three, another 50%. And this is because, remember the stop feeding effect. If the rats don't want to eat, then they don't need to leave the burrows to forage for food. And also another thing, when I said it, it, um, calcium is deposited in the soft tissues, part of that affects movement as well, it's also the joints. So there's a two thing now, they don't move to forage because they don't feel like eating, they stop feeding, and they also don't want to move because we have calcium in the joints. So the movement, again, we have the same lag period, and then we go in post-census, and look at the tracking patches. And again, there was nothing. So two methods of control. We had 100% control with seven days of baiting. So in this slide, we're looking at different uh, infestations that we've treated with cilantro for both house mice, brown rats, and black rats. And then we look at the number of trials. So four for the mice, 15 for the brown rats, and five for the black rats. 
And then the, the average time it took to control, the average um, days of baiting. So the house mice, it was 11.3 with a range of 7 to 21. Of those four, two were seven days or less, so 50%. For the brown rats, the average time for baiting was 10.5 days with a range of 6 to 23. And of those, 10 were seven days or less, so almost 67%. For black rats, the average time was 6.4 days with a range of 5 to 10. And four of them were seven days or less, so 80%. So as we say, not all trials are the same. There's different things happening. We have immigration, we have bait points being moved. I mean, we have disturbance to the site from the occupiers. So there's all other factors we know that go on. But that gives you an idea that, as we say, control within seven days is possible. And then we have the, the levels of a control we've achieved in the final column. So next, having looked now at the product overview and characteristics, just a few slides now on its physical and chemical properties. We've tested cilantro at minus 18, so a week in the freezer, and then palatability, and then also 77 degrees. We had it high, does it melt, was there any seepage? And no, there was no seepage. There was, because at the end of the day, there's no wax. And these were temperatures, again, because this is a global product, to mimic uh, true conditions that, that are found in, in different environments. And this is just a slide that shows what we have. So palatability ambient after a week at minus 18, after a week at 37 but 90% humidity, and then out, the last one is outside in a bait box um, in Germany in the winter where it was rain, it was cold, it was minus two, to plus 14, so more of a, a range of environmental conditions, if you like, and the palatability. So all of those, we have a few ups and downs, but there's no significant difference. It was all extremely palatable, and they all went on to affect 100% mortality. So no matter what the, the temperature exposure. So now we, we've, we've told why, why we developed cilantro, we know what it is, and now, how and where to use it. So these are the three species that are on the label. Mus musculus, Rattus norvegicus and Rattus rattus, which we've talked about a few times now through this presentation, for both anticoagulant resistant and anticoagulant tolerant strains. Use recommendations. So this is what the label will say. So we have house mice and rats. Um, including the resistant strains, and that will be on the label. And we're allowed to put that on the label because it's not an anticoagulant. So anticoagulants, even those that we know work against resistant rats and mice, can't, put, um, can't include resistant strains on the label claim. The situations for, for all species is indoors and outdoors around bit buildings. And the application rate for mice, it's 20 to 40 grams or one to two blocks. And again, every one to two meters, ideally in our tamper resistant bait stations or covered and protected bait points. For the rats, it's 100 grams to 140 grams or five to seven blocks every five to 10 meters. Again, tamper resistant bait stations or covered and protected bait points. So that's our application rate. We also have permanent baiting on the label and also the, the obviously the conditions to that apply with permanent baiting apply. So at preferred road and entry points, um, limited to sites with high potential for reinvasion, and it's got to be reviewed and it's part of an IPM strategy um, to keep assessing the risk of reinvasion because it might change the risk of reinvasion or reinfestation but we have permanent baiting on our cilantro label. So now we know how much we should be placing and, and the distance. So how do we replenish? So we have what's a technical application, 727. So for rats, it's seven blocks. We inspect one to two days later, then inspect on day 
seven and then every seven days. So for rats, seven blocks, one to two days later, and then day seven and every seven days. So seven, two, seven. For mice, it's two, two, seven. And this is the baiting regime. And this is what allows for the speed baiting. So this visiting after one to two days allows then for control within seven days to be possible. And we can have this quick control with this speed baiting technique because, as I've mentioned before, the unique combination of the stop feeding effect of the cholecalciferol and the high palatability of the bait matrix, this partnership means that we can go through the hierarchies for the infestation, so the dominance eat, then the subdominance. The dominance eat, after 24 hours, they are going to their burrows or nests until in their minds they feel better, but obviously they're going to die, and then the next level can feed, and then the next level. So we can quickly get through these hierarchies because every 24 hours, there is a group of rats that uh, go into the burrows, nests, because they, they have this stop feeding effect and can feel the effects of the cholecalciferol. The high palatability ensures this lethal dose is eaten before this stop feeding. So we have this partnership and like I say, this is just explaining what I said. So we have the dominant rats. They eat one day, 24 hours, after 24 hours, go to the burrows. The next level can eat because the baits are there available. Then the next level. And quickly we can get through these hierarchies. So one, two, seven. There are bait replenishment. Place on day one, replenish one to two days later, day seven, and then we're in a seven day cycle. And what happens is, because of this stop feeding effect, we have less bait eaten. So they don't carry on to eat multiple doses of the cilantro of cholecalciferol because of the stop feeding effect. That means then, we know that they're not moving as well, they're not contaminating the alternative food, and they're not spreading disease, and they're not causing damage. So it has multiple effects. So, from everything I've said, I hope you can see the key features and benefits of cilantro. So I want to take you through those. So rodent free in as few as seven days. So I think from the data we've shown and the mode of action and the palatability, we can see that this unique combination enables, it's possible, it enables us to control within as few as seven days. Stops the waste of resource. What do we mean by that? As we've said, this stop feeding effect means that they go to the burrows so they're not over consuming on cilantro so it's not a waste of, of cilantro and then also they're not eating and contaminating the alternative food so it's a a win-win there and obviously the result of that is saving time and money balancing performance and environmental impact if you remember one of the earlier slides with the active substance cholecalciferol it's not persistent in the environment it's not bioaccumulative it's readily metabolized in rodents, and it's 50 times less sensitive in birds, the quails and the mallards that we studied. And then the, the last, but by no means the least, is it breaks the cycle of resistance. So we have, if you remember this two-pronged attack, where it kills all anticoagulant resistant rats and mice, and resistance to cilantro is highly unlikely to develop. Okay, so, I hope you can see now the key features and benefits and the advantages that cilantro has for you in your toolbox. Okay, so thank you for listening and I hope you're as excited about the key features and benefits of cilantro as we are. And now over to the second part of our Hampshire video. Welcome to Hampshire. We've got a pig farm, and so it means that we've got a lot of development stage, a lot of different feeds going on site. It's all contributing to the big problem that we've got here, uh, so much so we're seeing rats during the day. My name is Oliver Madge. I am an industry consultant. We will go in and analyze sites where they have problems. We're in Hampshire, which is a high resistance area. So we came here to understand alternatives for anticoagulants baiting because it's environmental problem. 
We've relied now for 50 years for rodent control on the anticoagulants, and we're starting to develop problems with them, both from a resistance point of view and increasingly evidence about environmental contamination. The resistance to anticoagulants is widespread, particularly in Europe. And what's that led to is that anticoagulants have become more potent and more potent to combat this. So now we're at a critical point where the, you cannot make them more potent because it's not safe. We have not had a viable acute or semi-acute poison. Most of them have been chronics and most of them have been anticoagulants. We've chosen this site to sum it up because it is a worst case scenario. To have an infestation of this where there's two to three thousand Norway rats is unbelievable. From the farming point of view, they didn't know how big a problem they had. So we'll start off with the stable. And actually, we've got quite a lot of signs of activity up over in the far corner. Why are they here? What makes this so attractive? Well, we've got the perfect conditions for them. We've got somewhere to live. It's undisturbed and a food source for them as well. So one of the problems we've got here, they're doing a lot of renovation work, so we've got a lot of stored material. And what we've got with these, these bits of corrugated roofing is great locations in terms of uh, it provides them with cover. Uh, there's some droppings down there as well. And they'll probably use this as a bit more of a nesting area. So one of the big areas that we've got is the mill. So you can see we've actually got a lower level at the base of the silos. There's a lot of food spillage that's occur. You can see there's droppings, tail swipes, footprints. It's very common to see at least a dozen rats running around here, even during the day on that side. And it's because of the food source. Rats consume, on average, 25 grams of food a day. So you take an approximation of 2,000 rats. You times that by 25 grams. You times that by seven days a week, by 52 weeks in a year. What are you paying to feed rats on your farm that you're not dealing with? So we've got the mill, which is the, the main hub of the food source. What we're finding, and we've been tracking the rats um, back to these areas here, where we've got the individual pig pens, but where they haven't quite finished, uh, we've got a lot of plastic, uh, which is providing really good harborage. We have an awful lot of activity that's coming through. Uh, and when we start to do the control campaign, it's going to have to be a very heavy treatment in this area. I think this is a, it's probably the most challenging environment that, that we could have picked. We're talking 2,000 rats here, and this is just a very small, atypical farm. Our major concern is about wildlife and environment contamination because of the long persistence time of anticoagulants on the field. We have rats that have enhanced neophobia. 50 years of controlling them in exactly the same way has resulted in a selection of rats that are very careful indeed you're dealing with a part of the world which has probably got the worst rat problems from a resistance point mm. of view, both neophobic and genetic. Cilantro is a super palatable, efficacious, easy to use, resistance busting bait. Complete control with cilantro can be achieved in seven days. Resistance to cilantro is virtually impossible. Cholecalciferol is traditionally thought to be an unpalatable active, so we needed to counterbalance that with a really palatable bait base. So all our time and effort and expertise went into developing this super palatable bait. So here we have the, a sample of the cilantro bait. 99% of the ingredients in this block are human food grade quality. So this is part of what makes it highly palatable to the rodents. This type of environment is where cilantro would be an ideal bait to use. It's designed to be highly palatable so that it can compete with the alternative food that's here. And then because it has this stop feeding effect, after 24 hours, the rodents would stop moving around, so they'd stop contaminating and causing damage. 
Over the last 40 years, I've had several bites at field trail in cholecalciferol, and the control rates have been particularly poor, right. 40, 50 percent, 60 percent at best. I was extremely skeptical that we would ever see a bait which would be a usable rodenticide. If we can get cilantro to work here, we can get it to work anywhere. So we've just seen in the Hampshire video how difficult it is to control rats with neophobia and resistance. And it's really important for us at BSF that in order to get the most out of cilantro, we've designed a training programme, which I'm going to talk about now. So, the cilantro training programme. So BSF have developed an e-learning training programme specifically to educate you in the use of its neurodenticide cilantro and a process of baiting called speed baiting because it's quite different between um, pulse baiting and surplus baiting. The training should be completed prior to buying the product for the first time. So why have we done this? So cilantro isn't an anticoagulant. It employs a different mode of action to which provides users with valuable benefits. And there's this new baiting procedure called speed baiting. And Sharon's already explained how cilantro works and that it isn't an anticoagulant, but it also means that the way in which we use it is quite different. If you apply cilantro in the same way that you would normally apply rodenticides, then you might not get the same level of results. So what are you going to learn on this course? So this course, you will learn why you use cilantro, how cilantro works, the three factors for success, and speed baiting. So what is speed baiting? So speed baiting reduces the typical baiting period. It reduces the number of visits required and the time and the cost involved. It stops rodent damage quicker. It controls up to three times faster for conventional methods. And control can be achieved in as few as seven days. And the thing that we're focusing on with speed baiting is a 727 process, which is seven blocks for rats replenishing on day two and getting full control within seven days. And Sharon's already explained all that, but I'm just going to recap on that only because I think it's really important that you understand why you have to do the online learning. So she's already explained about the dominant wave eating first and that need to replenish the bait. And then the subdominant wave comes in and will eat that replenished bait and then you will get control in the seven days. Generally, an anticoagulant can take up to 21 days, sometimes longer to get control. With cilantro, it is seven days if you follow the speed baiting process. To understand the speed baiting process, we've got this online training. You can do it on your iPad, you can do it on your laptops, you can do it on any kind of tablet or any kind of smartphone. And it's at www.training.cilantra.com. And it's free to do, it doesn't cost anything, and you can do it any time you like. And it's split into three modules. The first mon module being why cilantro, reasons for using it. Module two, discover cilantro, the technology, it's three factors for success. And module three, speed baiting. And each of those modules is interactive. So it's got videos in it, it's got um, flick and play cards, um, it's got a case study in it, and it should take you less than 30 minutes. You can't jump through from one module to the next, you have to complete each module, and there is a test at the end of it, and you do have to get over 70% to pass. On passing, you will get a certificate. You can't jump from logging in immediately straight to the test. You do have to complete those modules, and that's really important. This is what the screen looks like, and you can see on the left of the screen there, it says 80% complete. So as you go through each module, it will click and tick off as you do each module. So here's an example of a question. So cilantro's high fallibility ensures that a lethal dose of the bait is ingested before rodents stop eating. Click on the statement. So you would click on the statement. So as you can see, here's, here's a screenshot of, 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 one of, the of two of the activities. So one of them is um, a click and flick card where you just click on the, the image and it rolls over and it says, 
it mobilizes calcium from the bones, increasing its absorption in the small intestine. And there's quite a few of those. And then we've also got later on in the training modules, I think it's module three, you actually see a, a real life scenario with a baiting plan. And you can see here, there's the outside of um, what looks like a poultry unit. And if you click on the little plus signs, it will come up and tell you what's happened at each of those points. All three modules are full of interactive activities like that. Um, on completion and on passing the test, a certificate identical to this with your name and, and a unique art user ID is emailed to your inbox. You then need to forward that email to Killgerm, who will then release the product to you. The pass rate is 70%, and you can do the, um, do the test as many times as you like. Um, and if you have any problems with it, then you can contact me. There is points awarded for it from BASIS and by BPCA as well. And I've got the details for that. And once I've, I can see that you've done the training, I will then forward you the CPD code. So thanks for listening. Go back to your computers, your laptops, your iPads, and sign up and do the online training. We're now going to go back and look at what actually happened in the Hampshire trial and see the results of that trial. It's been well, six weeks since the end of the trial. It was obvious from the outset that this was going to be no small job. This site had gone to, to a level where it was not untreatable, but nobody would have the skill sets or no, the time or the it investment was, it, to do it's it. It's hard work going yeah. around a site like that with 313 bait points. And there was an unpredictability about the response to the baits in, in lots of areas with low at levels of apparent activity, but in the end, very good bait takes. The results just really confirm everything that we have talked about. We had really good pre-census takes. We had an increase, a significant population. Bait took out 90% of the activity. I think it, it lays it all out yeah. wonderfully. Cilantro, because of the different mode of action, put us in another level to have another kind of choice. Mm. We have a product that can bring us benefits without too many environmental costs. I was very impressed with the results, but for, for somebody who's been working in, in southern and central southern England most of his life, and having to face problems with rat resistance and mice resistance, it's lovely to have the potential for a different mode of action, something that we can go in, we're not going to be selecting for more, more resistance, and indeed we can manage resistant populations mm. with reduced environmental risk. We've achieved 90% mortality control in 18 days, and that's so rapid and it reflects the difference in the cilantro, the speed of activity of cilantro. Mm. Oh. That, for me, is the major breakthrough. I think I would say that it's the major breakthrough in my 40 years in the business, is that we now have a non-anticoagulant that will take out resistant rats. The rate that it took such a large infestation down so quickly is a technician's dream, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.